Okay, well let's go ahead and create a loan amortization schedule. Now we're going to set up this demonstration as if you're going to buy a house with a 30 year loan, but we'll set it up so that you can use it for a car or anything else that you're going to uh, finance. So we'll go ahead and start by zooming this in a little bit, making the screen a little bit larger so I can actually see what's going on and it'll show up better on the screen as well. So I'm going to view to zoom. I'm changing custom zoom. I'm going to put in 150%. Just a little bit larger here. I can actually see what's going on now. All right, so we're going to start with the purchase price. And then a down payment. And then, of course, the loan amount. And we'll put in a formula that subtracts the two here. <laughs> All right, well, the interest rate is going to be important. So we'll make a sell for the interest rate. And then the loan length is going to be important too. And we'll put that in terms of years. And then of course a monthly payment. All right, I'm going to adjust the width of column A here by double clicking on the separator bar between column A and column B. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. We'll assume we're going to buy a $400,000 house. And we're going to put 10% down or 40,000. All right, we're going to put in a formula here, and we're setting this up as a template so we can use it again and again uh, and adjust uh, different purchase prices and down payments and interest rates. So I want the purchase price minus the down payment, which gives us a loan payment, excuse me, a loan amount of 360000 Well, our interest rate, we'll just assume in this case it's about 6.5%. Now I'm going to format that as a percentage so it looks just a little bit better. So I go back to the Home tab. And I click on the percent tool, and of course I'm going to add a couple of decimal places here. So we have 6.5. And I'm going to put in 30, and we'll assume that means years. Okay, I'm ready now to go ahead and compute the loan payment, and I will use Excel's payment function for that. So I'll start with an equals, and you could use the insert function, which gives you the dialog box where you can fill in the variables. But if we just type the name of the function and then the parenthesis, it will tell us what comes next. Well, the next thing it's looking for, if you see the little uh, tooltip down here at the bottom, is the interest rate. Well, the interest rate is in cell B6, so I'll just click on B6. However, we have to actually make sure that when we're working with uh, functions that deal with time, and in this case, we do have time. We have interest rate, which is uh, the, the time associated with that is an annual or a yearly rate. But then we also have loan length, which is years as well. But our payment we've specified is going to be monthly. So we have to convert the annual interest rate and the loan length into terms of months. So if we have an annual rate of 6.5%, we're going to divide that by 12 to come up with the monthly interest rate. We separate the variables with a comma. The next thing it needs is the number of periods. Well, the number of periods is based on the loan length, but that is years. We're going to be making monthly payments. So we're going to multiply that by 12. So we have the interest rate divided by 12, the loan length multiplied by 12, and finally we have the present value, or in this case, let's just call it the loan amount. All right, go ahead and press Enter in this case, and now we have a loan amount computed for us of 227544. Well, you'll notice it's red. That means it's a negative number, and, and that's fine. It's an outflow. but for creating our loan amortization schedule, it's going to be a lot easier if this is actually a positive number, just, just mathematically. So I'm going to go up here to the formula bar, and I'm going to add to the formula bar times minus 1. Anytime you, you take a negative number and you multiply it by negative 1, you'll end up with a positive number. So now I end up with a positive number of 227544, which I can easily use in my amortization schedule formulas that are coming next. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is, is put in the other columns. And so we'll call this one payment number. So we can keep track of each payment as we, as we go. Uh, we already know what the payment amount is going to be. Well, let's go ahead and figure out how much of this payment goes to interest and how much goes to principal. And finally, how much is left over? All right, we're ready to go ahead and compute our first payment. But 
what we need to do is put in the payment numbers here and we'll use uh, the fill handle to do that for us. I'm going to type in 1 and 2 and I'm going to highlight these two so that Excel knows the sequence that I'm working with here and I'm going to have to drag down here until we end up with a payment number of 360 so that's going to be a little bit ways to go here getting close We'll show you some shortcuts for copying formulas here in a bit, but uh, for right now we'll just start with copying it all the way down. There we go. Okay, payment number 360. All right, well the interest rate on the first payment is simply going to be one month's worth of interest on the loan amount. So I'll start here and I will go up here to the loan amount and just to give you a heads up the, the, the payment number one uh, the formula we're going to be using is different and we'll have to create it and we'll have to create the second row but we'll be able to copy uh, the second row all the way down 360 so we're going to multiply that now by one month's worth of interest so we're going to take the six and a half percent and divide it by 12 okay now I'm going to format this as currency as well, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, highlight this uh, and let's just format it as currency with a couple of decimal places is fine. All right, the principal is very easy to compute in this case. It's simply going to be the loan amount minus the amount that's interest. So uh, of that 2275 uh, payment, only 325 is going for the balance. Well, now the balance is simply going to be the original balance of the loan minus how much is principal. All right, so we've got a lot left over on this loan. Okay, we're ready now to compute the formula for payment number two, and we will be able to copy that because we're going to use absolute reference as we do. So we'll start with the interest. Now, for the interest, we're, we're no longer concerned about 400,000, uh, excuse me, 360,000. We don't owe that anymore. We only owe three hundred and fifty nine thousand six hundred seventy four dollars so our interest in this case is going to be computed based on one month's interest of the balance now I want to be able to copy this so when I get to the interest rate here I don't want to type just B6 because as I do when I copy it down uh, Excel will change it to B7, B8, B9 adjusting the cell addresses as we copy the formula we fix that with the absolute reference or uh, making it a constant and I've just used the F4 key to do that very very easily and again in this case we're taking that times the balance I mean, okay and then we're dividing it by 12 all right a little less interest this time well once again we can compute the principal based on the payment but we want all of the additional payments uh, formulas to use this payment so once again I'm going to uh, it's a constant amount I'm going to use the F4 here and then I'm going to subtract the interest for payment number two this does not to be need to be an absolute reference and then now my balance is going to be a little bit different because my balance is going to be the existing balance of the when I made this payment minus how much principal I'm making here okay so after making two payments, I'm down yeah, $600 or so. So here's the cool thing though. I can highlight these three formulas for payment number two. Because I've used absolute reference, I can then copy these formulas all the way down and they will adjust where they need to adjust. Uh, in this case being you know, the, the current principal, the current, uh, excuse me, the current interest, current principal, current balance. But it'll reference the payment amount and the interest rate as constants. Well, I'm kind of lazy rather than dragging all the way down to 360 like I did before. I'm just going to double click. And when I double click, it copies the formulas all the way down. And I can see now each payments, principal and interest. And I can finally watch. Well, I'm seeing a situation here where I have to increase my column width a little bit here okay so I've double clicked between the C and the D to increase my column width and slowly 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 the amount of interest is getting smaller the amount of principal is getting higher finally when I get to payment number 360 
I'm down to a zero balance. Now because we've set this up as a template, we can go ahead and make some adjustments here. So let's assume that we wanted to make this a 15 year loan. We can just type in 15 here. And now we see what the new monthly payment would be. Uh, maybe we're shopping around for different interest rates and maybe someone has quoted a six and a quarter. We can put that in and see how that adjusts. Um, very, very easy to create a loan amortization schedule. You can print it out if you want or just kind of keep track of things. Well, there you have. Uh, you can see how easy it is to create a loan amortization schedule. Uh, if you are as lazy as I am, you can just download this. And actually, uh, there's a much better version of this that uses some if statements and adjusts based on the loan length. And you can find that at luthermaddy.com on my Excel topics. Thank you very much. If you like this video, please like it. Hopefully you can subscribe and we'll see you again in the next Excel video.